everybody. It's Thursday, and you know what that means. It's question and answer day. So get on in here. We got stuff to do. We got questions to answer. We've got things to talk about. Today is May the 4th, and one of our little uh, fly lady grandbabies was born on this day, May the 4th. Mr. Luca. And here's our little devotional for today. Come on in, everybody. The chat's up and running. Satan's lie. Prayer doesn't make that big of a difference. God's truth. Prayer changes everything. You do not have because you do not ask. This is James 4.2. I pray this verse over my my family, over Fly Lady, over everything, every single day. You do not have because you do not ask. James 4, verse 2. I just think that's beautiful. And maybe those of you who are just getting in here, I might repeat it in just a little bit. So come on in. We've been going through this book every day. And as a bookmark for this book, we have Psalms 91. Psalms 91 is a powerful psalm to pray over your family. In fact, I'm going to pray this over. You know, today is a national day of prayer. Where is my magnifying glass? I know I have one here somewhere. But I don't know where it is. Anyway, I'm going to squint my eyes and see if I can see it. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Verse 3, surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. I just see a, a chicken. See that chicken right there? That's what chickens do with their little babies. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that strikes in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys the midday. A thousand may fail, may the a thousand may fall by your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If if you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you will make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near you your tent for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways they will lift you up with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone you will tread on the lion and the cobra you will trample the great lion And the serpent, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue them. I will protect him for the, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in, in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. 
with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is Psalms 91. Pray this over your family every day. Insert your names in it because you are acknowledging the Lord. Okay. We got some people in here. Let's go for day four in our chaos to clean book. Here we go. It's 1295 right now, y'all. Place post-it notes above your kitchen sink. Get dressed and shine your sink. You know, when you walk into the kitchen and you're in your gown tail and your house shoes are maybe even barefoot, let that be a reminder to, to uh, go get dressed. Don't wait. We don't like change. None of us like change. We are such control freaks. I've had to repent this week for being a control freak, y'all. And when we are not the ones implementing the change, we go bonkers. This is why gradual changes work so well for us. Our reminders help us to make these changes. We're going to focus on building and using our own control journals. I didn't have any reminders. I didn't have any reminders in email when I was when I started getting rid of the chaos in my life. All I had was my post-it notes and checklist in my control journal. We need reminders. This is why post-it notes are so good. Place a couple of colorful reminders on your bathroom mirror to get you ready for bed and then to greet you in the morning. These things, these will be the things we're practicing. When I was getting my home in order, I also had a checklist that would help me to remember all the things that I had to do each day. The checklist in combination with the habits I was establishing made amazing changes in my life and home. The baby step habits were my foundation. And I give uh, a whole list of the, the checklist, get up, make your bed, weigh, shower, get dressed to shoes, fix my hair and face. Swish and swipe my bathroom, put on a, put a load of laundry in the washing machine, make coffee, eat breakfast. See, that's that's how easy. And the hat and the quote for the day. Oh, here, here here's the testimonial for the day. I'm a very new fly baby, and I had to write. I discovered your website when I bought a new planner a couple of weeks ago and began to watch YouTube videos on planner organization. A couple of the posters mis mentioned you and I was instantly hooked. I'm still working on building my routines and taking baby steps, but I'm seeing a difference in my house. I'm seeing, I lost my place. I'm I'm still working on building my routines and taking baby steps, but I'm seeing, but I'm starting to see progress. It's like losing the first few pounds at the start of a diet. Seeing the difference in my house is so encouraging. What I wanted to share other than my gratitude was how I write my reminder notes in my new planner to do my morning and before bed routines. I don't call them that. I call them first flutter and nightly nesting. Oh, how sweet is that? It just makes me smile. And we just talked about being covered by the feathers. How beautiful is that? Um, thank you for making this seem manageable and reminding me that I can. Grateful Fly Baby from Tennessee. Our routines give us a different type of power. It's the power of peace. And it's contagious, y'all. Once you get once you get that sink shining and your countertops cleared off, you're just going to be blown away about how easy it is to keep your house. It's not cleaning house, it's keeping house. It's maintaining what you've done. Okay. 
let's get started on our questions. Yes, I donate clothes. Yes. Okay. Uh, number one question. It has to do with our fly lady rags. Let me get this out of the way. How do I get my fly lady rags clean after using for a while? They seem greasy even after giving a good wash. What can I do? Well, I love Dawn dishwashing liquid, y'all. I just, I, I started to say I swear by it, but I don't swear by it, but I love it. I, I love it. And, you know, I wash dishes and wipe down countertops with my rags. And Dawn dishwashing liquid cuts the grease in them. I mean, I wash things like a griddle that I used last night to cook steaks on. And I realized we don't need as much beef as we used to eat. We could have just cooked one steak and it would have been enough for us. But that helps to clean things. And putting them through a good washing machine, heavy duty wash with some... Um, what is that stuff called? OxyClean. But these things rinse well. I don't know what she's been scrubbing, but they seem greasy even after giving them a good wash. What can I do? I would just use what I would just use Dawn dishwashing liquid in it. But I've never had that problem, and I have wiped down some nasty stuff. I'm telling you. Okay. How did the feather duster come about? What's the history of the fly lady feather duster? Well, I love a feather duster and I had some, I had a little feather duster that I had gotten. I don't, I think I bought it to use the feathers to tie flies with. I know that sounds sacrilegious, but I think that's why I bought it. And when, when I started getting my house in order, I had this feather duster and I just started using it. I thought, well, that's a great tool. But then I realized it was a chicken feather duster and that's why I bought it because I wanted the marabou feathers on it. So we came up with a feather duster. We went to uh, Vancouver, Canada and met with the people that make feather dusters. I've been making feather dusters for two or three hundred years they are they are from lebanon lebanon that's you know really close to israel and they have little workshops all around the world and they get their feathers from ostriches out of south africa and these feathers these ostriches molt these feathers twice a year and they're collected. So, y'all, you're. I'm gonna have to change the chat so I can't see it because it's distracting me right now. Anyway, uh, so we had some feather dusters made for us. They weren't anything special. We just bought them and. And we got our first box in and my hound dog, Lucy, she's a blue tick hound dog. She smelt them and they had mothballs in them. And I opened a box to see how they were because they came and they were in front of my garage door. And Lucy grabbed one of them and took it out in the yard and buried it. I don't know. I'll never find it. But she buried it. And that's that was our first experience with feather dusters. Since then, there's no telling how many we've sold. I just have no clue how many feather dusters we've sold. But they're a great tool. They make us feel good using it. And it's just important to have a tool that um, you love using and you feel good while you're using it. What makes you get up and move every morning when your bed is nice and cozy? Well, 
I think what makes me get up and move is that I've had eight hours of sleep. It doesn't matter if I go to bed at one o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock at night. Once I've gotten eight hours, I'm ready to go. I'm just ready to go. I lay there in the bed and I just sort of clear my mind and start praying, thanking God for this new day and asking him to fill me with my purpose. And I, I hear a, a song in my head and it is just, it gets me moving. And I set up on the side of the bed. I count to 10. And if I don't know where I am in my count, I start over again. And then I stand up. And I make my bed. And then I go to the bathroom and I get dressed to lace up shoes, fix my hair and my face, and I'm ready to go. I guess it's God that helps me get out of bed because I'm refreshed. I'm ready. So get ready with me in 2023. Don't keep hitting the snooze alarm. I don't even have an alarm, y'all. Don't even have an alarm. You're not going to get anything done staying in bed. That's just laziness. Yeah, I said it. It's laziness. Get out of your bed in the morning. Don't drag around. Can you make a sheet of paper with all the directions for the products on it? They're all on each web page. They're all on the web page. I'm not going to do that. It's just... And we talk about it in the show. I send out testimonials about it. Well, even in our calendar, we don't have the new calendars yet, but it could be any day now. We teach you how to use a calendar. First two pages of the calendar. Yeah, we teach you how to use a calendar because I know you. You're a perfectionist and you think you're going to mess up your calendar. Well, you're not. So on the webpage in our shop.flylady.net, you will find all the directions on how to use the products. Okay, next question. Can you develop a tool that will clean shutters? I don't know what you mean by shutters. Outdoor shutters? We already have tools like that. We have the rubber scrubber. We have the multi one. We have the um, we have the rubber sweeper this thing clean i've used it to clean my back deck all kinds of stuff we we have the multi wand um if it's an outdoor shutter you got to be careful not get splinters in your hand so using a tool like this will do a good job and you might have to tape this to your mop handle because it doesn't have a very long reach. Now you could get the toilet bowl brush, a brand new one to use on your shutters. The main thing is why are you letting that get to you? You know, why are you letting that get to you? Now, if they're indoor shutters, you use your feather duster and you stay on top of it and use a, a gray rag or a blue rag, one of the lighter color ones, to wipe down the shutters on the inside. But you, you've probably got piles and piles on your hot spots, and yet you're getting hung up about shutters. Stop it. Stop it now. You get the rest of your house in order, and you can, once, once a month when we're in that zone, you can wipe down those shutters, and it'll take three minutes.
Where can we buy the book you've been reading in May? Well, it's on Amazon, but it's also on our website. Go to flylady.net. We have a shop up in the um, upper right-hand corner or on the left-hand side of the page. Or go to https forward slash forward slash shop.flylady.net. And the book's there. The book is there. And I'm sending out links to it all the time. What kind of exercises do you should suggest for moving in May if the person has been sedentary since the lockdowns? Well, we've been doing it. In fact, I think we'll we'll do it right now while we've got this question. We just started with a simple three-minute dance. Let's see what song we're going to play right now. We did Up Kind of Day yesterday. Let's do rocking routines. Are you ready? Get up and move with me. Get your shoes on. Rise and shine, everybody. I'm going to get tangled up in my microphone. Clear my head. I stretch and yawn to beat the day, then make my Wiggle. bed. Get myself all ready down to my shoes. My healthy breakfast puts me in a rocking mood. Move your feet, move your arms. Routines, routines. They, they keep, keep me rocking. Routines, routines. Keep me rocking. That's what we're doing. Me when I feel the power of my rocking routine. After school or after lunch, I keep my cool. This afternoon's half routines now, and that's my rule. Homework before playing, quickly get it done. After that, I'm out of here and on to have some fun. Routines, routines, they keep me rocking. Routines, routines. There's no stopping me when I feel the power of my rocking routines. Move, y'all! Routines can organize my day, give me much more time for play, help me know what's coming next. I think routines are the best. Do the twist! Time for bed. My last routine helps me relax and plan ahead. We close out for tomorrow. Think about my day. So proud that my routines have kept me rocking on the way. I'm gonna march. Routines, routines. They keep me rocking. Routines, routines. There's no stopping me when I feel the power. When I feel the power of my rocking routines, my rocking routines, my rocking routines, of my rocking routines, my rocking routines. Okay, people, stop that. That was two minutes and 32 seconds. That's what you do. You start you start small and you build up to where you can do two songs at a time and get it done. And another good thing to do is set your timer for every 15 minutes and get up and move for two minutes around your house, whether it's using a feather duster, a timer, whatever you need to do. Get up, grab a rag, grab a tool, and run around your house for two minutes. That's all it takes. Where are we? What are you planting this spring? I heard you say something about strawberries. 
on the show, but I missed the beginning. Well, that's all I planted yesterday because it's really not time for us to plant here. And I don't really have a garden. I have a, I have a flower bed in front of my hat, in front of my front porch. And so, you know, I'm going to sprinkle some flower seeds out next, next week and see if I can get any annuals. I did something to my glasses. Let me, I smeared them. <laughs> you ever smear your glasses and you didn't know you did it? And then you can't see anything? Okay. Purple rags to the rescue. So I'm going to plant some strawberries. I'm probably going to plant some of my potatoes that, and I know it's late for potatoes, but I have some potatoes that are starting to sprout and I'm going to stick them in the dirt. And then, um, I've got four fig trees coming and I'm going to plant them in my front yard. We don't get a whole lot of sun here. So I've tried to grow tomatoes, but it's, and Robert doesn't like tomatoes. So I don't, I don't get a lot of sun, but he's clearing out fence rows right now. He's digging up fence posts and, and doing things, um, to just get rid of the fence that's in our yard. He doesn't, he doesn't like it and, and trees fall on it and it's a pain. We got it about 15 years ago when our dogs killed a chicken and our neighbor was going to kill our dogs. So that's why we got it. But now we, we have a dog that stays pretty close to home unless she's with Robert. So I'll probably plant a bell pepper. I like bell peppers and It's just, you know, be ready. So I've planted strawberries. Whether we get five strawberries or no strawberries, I still planted them. Okay, that was question number eight. Someone suggested I put the money I was saving for menu planning in an envelope and save it for something fun. Would you save it? in cash or put it in the bank where it might become community money. Well, long, long time ago, I guess Justin was, Justin was probably three or four. I was saving my pennies. I'm telling you, I was saving and we all, some people pay cash for stuff. Robert goes by the bank every day, uh, not every day, uh, every couple of weeks and gets a couple hundred dollars. So he has some, he calls it walking around money. And he pays for things with that, with that cash. Uh, you know, they want us in a cashless society, but that's not, that's just not feasible. Uh, one time I once, and when, when I was doing this menu planning and saving money, I was putting away anything I could to purchase Rita Davenport's. It was a, an infomercial at 6 a.m. Well, it was really like 545 in the morning. And, and I saved up, I, I guess it was $150 or so I saved up. That was a lot of money back in the in the late seventies. And, but I saved it up and bought this, this cassette tapes. That's how old it was. Bought the cassette tapes for this series. And I would listen to them in the car when I would ride, ride to, when I drive to town, I would, I would listen to them everywhere. And it was like reprogramming my brain. But I saved it up as cash. Another time I put my loose pocket change in a jar for six months. And I used that $23.82 to cook Thanksgiving dinner one year when I didn't have a whole lot of money. So y'all, this is before Robert. This was long before Robert. Robert is a good provider and he takes good care of me. But you eventually have to put it in the bank 
so that you can write a check to get something unless it's something local you can buy. So y'all or buy a gift card with it. I guess you could do that. But I would just keep it in a jar. You know, just if you know you saved a couple of bucks, put a couple of bucks in the jar every time you go to the grocery store. But you've, if you've eventually got to buy a gift card or something to be able to use it. Because there's not a whole lot of people that take cash anymore. We rarely take cash. <laughs> what is the focus for each day of the week? I want to add, add it to my calendar. Well, Monday is weekly home blessing. Tuesday is plan and play. Wednesday is always anti-procrastination day. And if you got our emails, you would know this. You would know this because, and if you've been getting our emails and all of a sudden you're not getting them anymore, check to see if you've been unsubscribed because a lot of IP addresses will just automatically unsubscribe you like Gmail. They'll just say, you haven't opened this in a long time and, you know, ask and you'll just blindly say, yeah and unsubscribe from, from our email. So go sign back up. Go to flylady.net and hit the join button and sign back up. If you're already in there, it's not going to let you join twice. Thursday is to run a few errands. Now, you run these errands because you run the errands so that you don't have to run them on the weekend. This is saving your weekend for family fun and not being stuck, not being stuck running around, running errands, getting groceries, doing all this stuff on a day when you need to be making memories with your family because they're only little ones. Friday is clean out your car day, clean out your purse. And plan something for date night. Saturday is family fun day. Sunday is renew your spirit. But we need to be doing that every day right now. Every single day we need to be in prayer with the Lord. And today is National Prayer Day. So let, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for having a country that will declare a national prayer day, a national day of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to see how much you love us. It's not that you need us. You love us and you want to spend time with us. I love Dutch Sheets' book, The Pleasure of Your Company. It's, and I got it in hard copy yesterday. Thank you, Lord, for it being out there. We love you, Lord. Thank you for National Prayer Day. But we want to make every day a National Prayer Day because you are our Father. And we want to spend time with you. Thank you, Lord. Lift up this country and, and the countries where fly babies are are following us all over the world. Help them to pray for their countries because we're all on this world together and we need to work together to be a bright light shining for you, Lord. We love you with all our hearts. We praise you for all that you've given us. Keep us safe from evil. Protect us from our own self sometimes. We can be our worst enemy. But right now, let's repent. I repent, Lord, for being a control freak. I repent repent for being a perfectionist. Help me to do better, Lord. Help me to recognize when I'm being a control freak and when I'm being a perfectionist. That's the start of changing things in our lives. It's those little changes, Lord, that make us stronger for you in our faith. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Okay, that's the focus. And get our flight plan every day. When you get that flight plan every day, you know what the mission is. And you know what day of the week it is. How do you keep your home clean and work all the long hours you work? Do you do a weekly home blessing every Monday? No, I do one item each day. So Sunday I change my sheets and there is a little, no, there's a little um, poster in the control journal section of our website that you can download and print out. And it's doing something every day or just doing that list of things. It's seven items that you do and it's change your sheets, vacuum, Empty the trash. Let's see what this one. Wipe down your windows and the windows in your doors. Clean off your hot spots. Mop. And feather dust. That's all it is. And you do one a day. One each day. That's how I do my weekly home blessing. And it works for me. It, it has worked for years. And I have this poster on my bathroom wall. So as I turn to go out of my bathroom, that poster is on the, the right-hand side of my, my door facing. Just right there. Well, y'all, that's all our questions. Let me get the chat back up so I can see it. Trisha says, discipline. Doing routines brings freedom. Yeah, it does. I, I listened to uh, a Gaither vocal band song the other day, Let Freedom Ring, and it was just beautiful. A fly lady doll is so cute. I love having a second bucket. Oh, Hope's been shopping our, our, our last chance items. We found a few fly lady dolls. I think they went fast, though. Y'all, check out the last chance items. We've got some stuff in there. We found some more rags. So get them ordered. This is our kitchen scrubber. I love this thing. And, you know, if you need to help with, help with routines, if you, if you need help with your routines, all of us have a clock on, on our phones and it's an alarm system but you can also set up alarms for you like I have an alarm at 10 minutes to 11 to get in here and be ready to go on camera yeah I have an alarm for that I have an alarm to start my tea water at 2 30 in the afternoon which I'll be back here for tea time at three o'clock so set your alarm for 2.30 so you can remember to get your tea boiling. And if I do it to, at 2.30, my tea water is just right. You know, like the little, three little, little bears, three bears. So utilize our technology. Utilize it. And you'll be glad you did. If not, build your control journal, which is another form of technology. It's pen and paper. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be, it can be in a four by six photo album with note cards. But don't go buy out the note cards. I'll just be be good to yourself. Yeah. By not piling on. I don't even keep my phone in, in our bedroom at night. It stays by my chair. Robert's phone is in our closet and the closet door is shut, but we could still hear um, an alarm. We could still hear what's going on. So y'all, I love you all so much. I'm so thankful that God gave my life purpose. I was watching a video yesterday. It was last night. 
And one of the little homesteaders in Portugal that I, I really like to follow because he can do anything. He was building a chimney for his forge. And y'all, many years ago, I wanted to be a blacksmith. And we bought an anvil and we bought a forge. And you know, then fly lady started. We gave our anvil away. Robert had reconditioned this anvil and we had done what we needed to do. But you know, I, I mean, I was going to make yard art. Imagine that. I'm not making yard art anymore. I was going to make quilts. I'm not making quilts anymore. I found out I like designing them more than I liked making them. And the same thing would have happened with, I had a loom. I gave that to my sister-in-law. And she's quite a weaver. She's a better, uh, she likes to make baskets. But y'all, I didn't know what my purpose was until I let the Holy Spirit guide me. I said, okay, God, you want me here? Then I got to have something to do. And Fly Lady was born. And all those other things just went by the wayside. I blessed other people with them. In fact, a couple of the quilts that I had put to, I had uh, made, cut up and put into little, little packets for the squares. A lady came down from Michigan and got them. Yeah. And they, their quilting bee put them together and made, and made quilts for foster children. So some child is taking they're probably grown by now, but they're taking this quilt that I cut out with my two hands and that these wonderful ladies put together. And they gave new meaning to what was procrastination on my part. God can do that. He can bring new meaning to everything if you will just allow it. Allow the Holy Spirit in. Ask the Holy Spirit to come in. Well, folks, I love you all so much. And I'm so happy to be here and to be part of your lives. Don't give up. Don't give up. Quit listening to TV. Stay focused on your home and your family and yourself. And the Word. Stay in the Word. All the time. Listen to you know Marty Grisham on Loudmouth Prayer. He's going to be on with Amanda Grace tonight. They're doing uh, something on Amanda Grace's channel. But it's a national day of prayer. Spend some time today in prayer, praying for your country. Not just the United States, all the countries, because we're all in this together. We're all in this together. I love you all. And I will see you at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Be here. Bring your tea. And let's just enjoy some time together. Talking about I don't know what. But we'll talk about something. I love you all. Bye.